Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. On 19th July 2022, South Korea stunned the world with the first flight of its indigenous fighter jet KF-21. The fighter jet demonstrated the 30 minutes of flight test on its first trial. The most noticeable point about its first flight was its weapon payload. We could see four MBDS Meteor missiles mock-up in its semi-recessed bay. It's a very rare to see first flight of a fighter jet with weapon payload. The South Korean attempt to build its latest 4.5th generation fighter jet is being lauded by international community. And at the same time, it's a lesson to be learned for Indian defense industry. Interestingly, China seems to be feeling insecure about new Korean fighter jet and for the obvious reason as it will definitely change the regional balance of power. Many Chinese analysts have started comparing KF-21 with Chinese J-20 and calling it no match for the mighty dragon. Now before we further discuss, we have to understand the design philosophy of KF-21. It's not being developed to supersede or compete against J-20 or F-22 Raptor or F-35. The goal was to design an indigenous 4.5th generation fighter jet that are more capable than existing fleet of Korean KF-16 that country operates in large number and at the same time much cheaper than F-35 in terms of operation and maintenance which South Korea operates in decent numbers. Even though KF-21 falls in 4.5th generation category, it has DNA of F-35 fighter jet which is technically at present the most advanced fighter jet. The DNA of F-35 or the various technologies related to F-35 jet was transferred to South Korea by Lockheed Martin as a part of F-35A fighter jet deal. As per reports, nearly two dozen F-35A technologies were transferred to South Korea. However, the US government blocked the transfer of four vital technologies which includes AEC radar, infrared search and track IRST system, electro-optical targeting pod and radio frequency jammer or RF jammer technology. South Korea was thus required to develop these technologies indigenously. Now various Chinese analysts are highlighting two main weaknesses of KF-21. The first one is a stealth and second one is its underpower engine. As for Chinese analysts, the design suggests limited stealth capabilities. However, although the KF-21 aerodynamics design adopted much of the frame of a stealth fighter, the test flight indicated that it carried four model missiles on external hardpoints, suggesting very limited stealth capabilities. Now, if you remember in beginning, we have highlighted about the mock-up of four Meteor missiles being integrated in the fighter jet's semi-recessed bay. Unlike other fifth generation fighter jets such as J-20 or F-35, the KF-21 does not feature an internal weapons bay which reduces the radar cross-section of the fighter jet and improves the stealth characteristic. While KF-21 design is inspired by fifth generation fighter jets such as F-35, it lacks the internal weapons bay making it non stellar and puts it in 4.5th generation category. The decision to have an internal storage for weapons depends upon what is more important to the designer of the aircraft. For example, it is more important to carry weapons internally and get benefit of a reduced radar cross-section than it is to put fuel storage there and mount the weapons externally. In that question, it is a choice between stealth and range. All design and loadout decisions in an aircraft design are compromises and balancing acts. Even though J-20 is claimed to be a stealth fighter jet, it has a massive, almost close to Su-30 MKI in terms of dimension. However, KF-21 is much smaller fighter jet which definitely aids in reduction of overall RCS of the fighter. J-20 has a combat range of 2000 km at the same time, much smaller KF-21 has an impressive combat range of 1450 km and ferry range of 2900 km. Another point of discussion has been its underpowered engine. As per Chinese analyst, the KF-21's American-made 
F414G 400K engines are also a clear shortcoming as their power would not be able to match 5th generation fighters requirement for super cruise and maneuverability. Now the F414 is one of the US Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft engines even planned to be incorporated in India's 4.5th generation fighter jet such as Tejas MK2 and 5th generation fighters such as MK and TBF. The engine is nearly smokeless which gives excellent stealth feature which none of the Chinese or Russian engine can match. It incorporates advanced technology with proven design base of its F404 predecessor and features a FADEC that is fully authority digital engine control system. It still has a decent thrust of 97.9 kN with afterburner and allows KF-21 to have max takeoff weight of 25,400 kg and can achieve speed of Mach 1.81. Since the fighter jet is of 4.5th generation, it does not need to have a super cruise ability. Now with the stealth design, composite airframe, advanced avionics, ASA radar, electro-optical targeting pod, an infrared search and track system, and one of the best missiles such as MBDS Meteor, AIM-9X Sidewinder and AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missiles, the KF-21 is going to be one of the best 4.5th generation fighter jet. The induction of significant number of these fighters is going to be a big challenge for China in the region and this is the reason we could see so many Chinese analysts jumping into comparing Korean 4.5th generation fighter jets with Chinese 5th generation fighters which is yet to be combat proven. The first batch of K-21 is expected to finalize and enter mass production in 2026 with at least 40 to be delivered by 2028 and up to 120 by 2032. Once inducted in large numbers, KF-21 is going to be a cheap and best alternative to F-35 which South Korea is operating and at the same time a significant threat to China which has never ending territorial claim. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We'll be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.